Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Determine the appropriate test statistic to be used in the given problem or situation and compute for the test statistic value for the population mean. Let's have a quick activity. Am I a Z or T? If you are given the population standard deviation, what are you going to use? Z test or T test? You're going to use Z test. If you are not given the population standard deviation, but your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, then you are going to use Z test. But if the population standard deviation is unknown and the sample size is less than 30, then this is the time that you are going to use T test. In this lesson, we are going to use two formulas. One is for computing the Z value and the other one is for computing the T value. Notice the similarities here. X bar here is the sample mean. Mu is the population mean. And N is the sample size. The only difference is the standard deviation. If you are going to use Z-test, then you're going to need population standard deviation denoted by sigma. If you are going to use T-test, then you're going to need sample standard deviation denoted by letter S. And if it is a t-distribution, we also have this what we call degrees of freedom, which is equal to n minus 1. Let us try this. Sample mean is equal to 100. Population mean is 105. Sigma is equal to 15. And the sample size is equal to 50. First step, we have to identify what test statistic to use. Since we are given here the population standard deviation and our sample size is greater than 30, then we're going to use Z-test. Step 2, let us write the formula. So we have Z is equal to sample mean minus population mean all over sigma divided by the square root of n. Step 3, substitute the given to the formula. Sample mean x bar is equal to 100, mu is equal to 105, sigma is equal to 15, and n is equal to 50. Step 4, solve and simplify. 100 minus 105 is negative 5. A square root of 50 is equal to 7.071, round off to the nearest thousands. 15 divided by 7.071 is 2.121, round off again to the nearest thousands. And negative 5 divided by 2.121 is equal to negative 2.357. This is now our computed Z value. Let's have another one. Sample mean is equal to 600. Population mean is 582. Sample standard deviation is 60, and the sample size is 100. Again, step 1, identify what test statistic to use. We do not have the population standard deviation. We have sample standard deviation instead, but notice that our sample is greater than 30. So still, we are going to use Z-test. Step 2, let us write the formula. Step 3, Substitute the given to the formula. Sample mean is 600. Population mean is 582. Since we do not have sigma, we're going to use sample standard deviation, which is 60. And our sample size is equal to 100. Let us solve and simplify. 600 minus 582 is 18. A square root of 100 is 10. 60 divided by 10 is 6. And 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3. Here, we did not use any calculator to solve for our Z value. Let's have another one. Sample mean is 55.5. Population mean is 55. Sample standard deviation is 2. And the sample size is 20. Step 1. Identify what test statistic to use. Since we have sample standard deviation and our sample is less than 30, then we're going to use t-test. Step 2, let us write the formula. t is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean 
all over the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Step 3, let us substitute the given to the formula. Let us solve and simplify. 55.5 minus 55 is 0 0.5. A square root of 20 is 4.472, round off to the nearest thousands. 2 divided by 4.472 is 0 0.447. Again, round off to the nearest thousands. 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.447 is 1.119. Now, what if we encode these values exactly as is in our scientific calculator? Let me show you. So we have here 55.5 minus 55 all over 2 divided by a square root of 20, exactly the same way it is written here. Initially, the calculator will give you an answer in a rational form. Simply press this button here, and it will be in decimal form. Notice the answer. Here we have 1.118 round off to the nearest thousands, while here we have 1.119. There is a discrepancy of 0 0.001, and that discrepancy is because of the rounding off that we did here. First, we round off a square root of 20 to the nearest thousands, and then we also round off 2 divided by 4.472 to the nearest thousands. That causes the discrepancy of 0 0.001. So what I tell to my students is to encode the numbers the way it is written here. Let me show you. I have searched for a scientific calculator online, and this is from JAlgebra that works the same as my scientific calculator. Since we need a fraction, we're going to press this button here. Notice that the cursor is now in the numerator. Let's key in our numerator. You may use your mouse or keyboard. 55.5 minus 55. Put the cursor down. Since you need another fraction in the denominator, let's press again this button. And then we'll input our sigma here, and that is 2. Put the cursor below. We have a square root of 20. Now you have the answer, which is exactly the same when rounded off to the nearest thousands. The problem is, if your calculator do not have this feature, so what are you going to use? You are going to make use of the parentheses. Let me show you. I searched for another scientific calculator online, and this is from calculator.net. This time, I'm just going to use parentheses because it has no fraction feature. For the numerator, I have to enclose that. So open parentheses, 55.5 minus 55. Close parentheses. This is my numerator. Divided by, so I have here the division symbol. Open parenthesis again for my denominator. I have 2 for sigma. Divided by again, the square root, this one, of 20. Close parenthesis as a partner of this open parenthesis here inside the square root symbol. And another close parenthesis as a partner of this open parenthesis here before 2. Now, I have the answer. Let me show you when I encode it in my calculator using just the parentheses. So I have here open parentheses, 55.5 minus 55, close parentheses, and this is for the numerator. And then I have here divide for this fraction bar here, and then open parentheses again. Then we have 2, this one, and then division again for this fraction bar here, and then I press a square root, and then 20. Then close parentheses. So this second pair of open and close parentheses is for your denominator. See, I have the same answers. So even if your calculator do not have this feature, you may use open and close parentheses and still arrive with the exact answer. Let's have another activity. What's my value to you? Number one, null hypothesis mu is equal to 70. Alternative hypothesis, mu is not equal to 70, sample mean is 73, sample size is 40, and sigma is equal to 5. Since we are given the population standard deviation and our sample size is greater than 30, then we are going to use z-test. Let us recall our formula for z-test, and now let us substitute the given. 
Sample mean, we have 73. Population mean, we have 70. Sigma, we have 5. And sample size, we have 40. Input this in your calculator using the parentheses, and you will arrive at this answer. Let us check in a calculator if you encode it exactly the same as this one. And you have the same answer. Round off to the nearest thousands, we have Z is equal to 3.795 because 7 is greater than 5, so we're going to add 1 in our 4 here. Let's have another one. Null hypothesis mu is equal to 15. Alternative hypothesis mu is less than 15. The sample mean is 13.50. The sample standard deviation is 4.2. And the sample size is 15. Use alpha equals 0 0.05. So first, let us express these numbers here in their proper notation. Sample mean is x bar. x bar is equal to 13.50. Sample standard deviation is a small letter s equals 4.2. Sample size is n equals 15. Then we have alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Since we have here sample is standard deviation and our sample is less than 15, we are going to use t-test. Let us recall our formula and let us substitute our values here. X bar is 13.50, just the same as 13.5. Mu is equal to 15. Sample standard deviation is 4.2. And sample size is equal to 15. Using the parentheses in your calculator, encode it this way. And you will arrive with this answer. Let me check that in my scientific calculator encoded in this manner. And still we have the same answer. Round off to the nearest thousands. T is equal to negative 1.383. Last one, null hypothesis mu is equal to 85. Alternative hypothesis mu is greater than 85. The sample mean is 88. The sample size is 40. And the sample standard deviation is 6. Use alpha equals 0 0.10. Again, let us express this in their proper notation. Sample mean x bar is 88. Sample size, n, is 40. Sample standard deviation, s, is 6. And alpha is equal to 0 0.10. We have here sample standard deviation, 6. But our sample is greater than 30. So, we are going to use z-test. Let us recall the formula. And let us substitute our given here. Sample mean is equal to 88. Population mean is equal to 85. We do not have sigma, but we have sample is standard deviation. So we'll use 6 instead. And sample size is equal to 40. Encode this in your calculator and you'll have this answer. Let us check if we encode this the same way as this one. And yes, we have the same answer. Round off to the nearest thousands, we have 3.162. Let us do extra challenge. Supply the data being asked and determine the computed value of the appropriate test statistic. Assuming normality, 35 students were randomly selected to test their typing skills. They have a mean of 38 words per minute. Let alpha be equal to 0.05. Test if this is significantly different from the average typing speed of 40 words per minute with a standard deviation of four words. Like what I advised in my previous lesson, first look for the sample size. We have here 35 students were randomly selected. So this is my sample size N. And then they have a mean of 38 words. So this mean pertains to our sample. So this is the sample mean X bar. Let alpha be equal to 0 0.05, that is the level of significance. Is this significantly different from the average typing speed of 40 words per minute? So this 40 here is the population mean. This will be our null hypothesis. H sub 0 mu is equal to 40. Now, for the alternative hypothesis, is this significantly different? So, the word here is different. So, we have mu is not equal to 40. With a standard deviation of four words, this pertains to the population. So, this is sigma 
equal to 4. We have sigma. We have the sample size greater than 30. Therefore, we're going to use z-test. Let us recall our formula and substitute our values here. Let us compute, and this will give us this answer. Round off to the nearest thousands, z is equal to negative 2.958. For the summary, we used two formulas in this lesson. This one is for z-test. It is used when sample size is greater than or equal to 30, and the population standard deviation is known. This one is for t-test, used when the sample size is less than 30, sample standard deviation is known, the population is also normal or at least approximately normal. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer, like what we did earlier, we're going to supply the needed data and we're going to compute for the value of the appropriate test statistic. In the past, it took an average of 30 minutes queuing in the registrar's office. The dean introduced a new procedure, and he believes that it is effective. A sample of 50 students from a normally distributed distribution revealed an average of 26 minutes waiting time with a standard deviation of 9 minutes. That's the claim at 10% level of significance. So again, first I look for the sample size and we have here a sample of 50, so n is equal to 50. Revealed an average of 26 minutes. This refers to the sample, so this is the sample mean. With a standard deviation of 9, also refers to the sample, so this is a small letter S. Alpha is at 10%, 0 0.10, the level of significance. It says here, in the past, it took an average of 30 minutes. So this will be our null hypothesis. Mu is equal to 30. Now, it says that he believes it is effective. When we say effective, you are going to fall in line for less than 30 minutes. So, mu is less than 30. Let us analyze. We have here sample standard deviation, but our sample size is greater than 30. So, still, we are going to use z-test. Let us recall the formula and substitute our values here. x-bar is equal to 26. Population mean mu is equal to 30. We do not have sigma, so we'll use s instead, that is equal to 9. And our sample size is equal to 50. Let us compute, and this will give us, round off to the nearest thousands, negative 3.143. Gets? Our next lesson is drawing conclusion about population mean based on test statistic value and critical region.